Okay, so you just downloaded 99 cameras and this is what you see when you download the mod. So first thing you want to do is pick which version that you want to use. Wi-Fi only or with extra components. The only reason you'd want to use this one is if you want to also use search lights, motion sensors, etc. at the point of the camera like a light as I have there. So the way that you use the mod is you just copy and paste the one that you want. So for this example I have another sub that already has these three installed and I'm just going to copy and paste this one just to show you how it works. So for example, say I want this one, which is click only, I want 10 cameras. Copy of all these cameras, save item assembly, cameras. So once you're in here, go to your item assemblies, click on this here. Here we have cameras. It's warning me that it's a lot of components. Okay, we'll drop this in over here. Uh, so basically you would just copy and paste these cameras wherever you want to put them on your sub. So for the purposes of, the t of this demonstration, we'll just put them there. Um, drop this one here, uh, just so we can see what this is showing us. We'll put this here, maybe make it a little bit bigger. And we'll just drop this in here with the rest of them. And so the, all you have to do is set the number of cameras. Here we have 10 cameras set. There's 10 cameras. Just to show you how it works, let's change it to five. And let's do the test. So first let's check this one. We just edit it. So here we're on camera one, it says camera one. If you click, you go to the next one, click, stops at five, starts over again. You can click uh, as much as you want. Click in a frenzy, it doesn't work. You still only skip one camera. There's no way you can break this mod. And although it's quite small, you can see there it says camera three, camera four, camera five. Okay, let's test the other ones. So this is exactly the same thing, except it's using the Wi-Fi cameras. So here I have all 99 cameras set up, but here we set, again, value 5. So it should only count to the fifth camera. Here you have the fourth camera missing. It's set to the bottom of the sub, so you can see it actually does switch somewhere else in case you were curious that, I don't know, they're all in one spot. So this is the display for that one. So here we're on camera 2, camera 3, camera 4, there it is, front of the sub. Hello, can't see anything. Camera 5, restarts. Second version. This one also has the radio control. So how many cameras did I put in this time? 99. So we can go anywhere we want. So two, three, four, four. There's four off the screen again. Click as much as you want. Say we want to use the radio control. I set it to Wi-Fi channel one. So you push R. Unfortunately, it disappears. Click this to make it stay. Pick any number you want. Okay, how about 25? 25 camera I put off to the left. There it is. Push R. Another camera. Seven. R. 88 any camera you want instantaneously. You want to start clicking again? Start clicking. There's 99 at the bottom. One, two, three, we're starting back at the beginning. And my favorite, this is the official UR security guard. All you want to do is sit there, watch the camera switch. I don't got time for anything else. We're starting on camera one. Actually, no, sorry, we were on camera seven because this is connected to the same radio control as the other one. So when I switched the previous one to camera seven, this one also switched to camera seven. But nevertheless, I take the first click and away we go. I'm, I'm waiting for something to happen. A monster. You name it. Right? Right, you know, suddenly you see something on the camera, you spill your coffee. You click once, the camera stops. Oh, it turns out it was nothing, just the coil gun. Click again restart our casual traveling. So I happened to have this one set to uh, 25 cameras. So that was the last camera, 25 cameras, which is why it restarted right when I happened to click there. So there you have it, that's 99 cameras. Okay, so for anyone who's still interested and still watching, I wanted to go into a little bit more in depth about how the circuit actually works in terms of which signals are actually sent where. Uh, so I'm just going to go through the components sort of one at a time. But to start, uh, the circuit's basically set up into three sections. The first section being you sort of sending the signal. The second section being us incrementing the Wi-Fi channel, in this case, to plus one. And then the third section being checking if you've counted too far. So we'll just go through them one section at a time. So it starts at the beginning with a periscope, which I've wired the, if you've never done this before, right, this is how you do the wiring. So I 
where the position to the Wi-Fi component. And so this, uh, it's possible to send the position over the Wi-Fi signal. I mean, obviously, that's how this, this build works, right? So I'm sending the position to signal in. And then this is set to some channel, which in this case is 101, uh, because I set that to the default starting channel. And it corresponds to channels in these cameras. So I've, you know, set them up in such a fashion, right? They need to be increasing ascending numbers like that. So when you look through the periscope, you're going to see this camera's control being sent through the Wi-Fi. So then if you want to switch cameras, you click, right? So what that does is it sends a one on the trigger. And the way the triggers work in this game is if you hold the button down, it sends a signal every like 100 milliseconds, something like that. So I put a delay component in here, which literally the purpose is stated, double click protection. So this is set up in a particular way uh, where I have selected reset when signal received. So what this does is resets the delay time if you re continuously receive the same signal within the set delay time. So if I hold down the button or click in a frenzy, it basically eats the following signals after the first one. So you can kind of use this as a simple one component way of preventing multiple signals from getting through into your circuit. Um, so you, well, you can still double count, but you have to just click a lot more than 0.2 seconds. Um, you could, obviously you could prevent that, right? You could put more components in, but one is good enough for this case. So your one comes along here and it's gonna go into the adder component. The adder component is set up to add two numbers together just whatever you put in one and two. So we're getting a number one from the delay component, like an arithmetic one. And our number two is coming from our memory component, which we have preset to be the Wi-Fi channel. Uh, so this is one of the only things that you need to preset is this Wi-Fi channel. Uh, and it's constantly telling this Wi-Fi component what its channel is to be with the set channel control here. Uh, so just while I'm in here, I'll mention, um, because we're not using this Wi-Fi component for chat-related things, you don't have to change any of these things. And you probably shouldn't click link to chat, so you don't start sending chat messages just for to keep it cleaner, as it were. Okay, so uh, once your adder component adds, what, it's, uh, the, what I have it set up to do is it sends what it adds up to become the output of this AND component. So basically, when you send a signal here, this one says, I got a signal. Then this one waits to see what the signal is. And then if it, if you are within the numbers that you're allowed to count to, i.e. less than the number of cameras, it will, you know, sends this one along. If you're beyond the number of cameras, then the reset loop activates. So this greater component is constantly sending, yes, you're at the right channel, because it's actually only checking from here. So this AND component always sends its output, gives it to the memory component, then it gets sent in almost instantaneously to this subtraction component, which all I'm doing here is subtracting the channel offset from your wi starting Wi-Fi channel. The reason this is in here is so that you can choose any starting Wi-Fi channel. So this is the second thing that you need to edit if you're editing this, is first you edit the starting Wi-Fi channel, then you edit the channel offset, which is one less than the starting Wi-Fi channel, always. So this basically just subtracts, and now you end up with actually the number of camera, the camera number that you're on. So then that's checking against the stated number of cameras. And so basically what happens is if, you know, if you're still on the right number of cameras within that range, it sends, keeps sending the output. If you're not, it stops sending this output, and it only sends this guy instead. And this is just resetting to the start. So why did I set it up this way? I mean, there's a few different ways you could do this, right? Like, I'm basically always allowing the signal to go through, and then I'm overwriting it if we've gone too far. Uh, this works. The other way you could do it, I guess, right, is you would block this signal and then only send this reset signal. Why does this, what would I choose to do it this way? I found this sort of idiosyncrasy of barrel trauma in particular is blocking signals or stopping them is kind of difficult. They have a tendency to sneak through. You know, if you're counting things too quickly, 
components, for example, equals component that you're using to check for things, it doesn't catch it fast enough and the signals will get through. A setup like this, I'm always allowing the signals to go. And then if they're wrong, I'm changing them, right? So basically I'm letting this guy go and then if it's wrong, then I'm saying, wait, don't take any more input, we need to reset. Then once it's reset, now you're allowed to take input again. So I found that this system is much more robust for, you know, railroad trauma reasons to people clicking too much and, you know, things like that. It's more difficult to break it if you do it this way because you're always allowing everything to always propagate through. You're never stopping anything. So there's no timing issues or like race conditions built into this, right? Everything just always goes, you know, we don't have any delay components, right? Anywhere in here sort of waiting for anything to happen. It all just propagates through all on its own all the time. So I found that this setup works pretty well. I mean, if you wanted to change it, this is basically the gist of how it works. The only part I didn't explain was I added a, a little extra bit here so that it displays the cameras. And you know, we're just using normal concatenation component if you've never wired something like this before. Uh, it just takes these two signals and adds them together. And I just literally put in the text, camera, number sign, semicolon, colon, with a space because the spaces matter and then it shows up like this. So, I mean, there you have it. That's like the nuts and bolts, I guess, of how the 99 cameras works. So this is only the click version. Um, if you want, you can look at the rest of the components yourself. Uh, for entering the radio, it's extremely simple, right? All you're doing is entering a number into the radio and it, all it's doing is overwriting this with that number, basically. And if it's too high, then, right, it's just not allowed to go in. There's just another greater component there. So if you've watched this far, I hope this explanation was helpful. Maybe for one of your own builds, if you're having trouble working out how it works, or you're trying to build something similar, seeing this design could, you know, give you ideas or help you finish up your own build. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for more guide videos for vanilla builds, barrel trauma wiring basics.